So this patient comes from Florida to Seattle, and uh, both son and dad, the, you know, sleep apnea, his mother is sleep apnea. And uh, so we expanded him. And this is one of those cases. So this is the appliance, right? So we are starting with this run. This is our protocol now. I am going to explain to you our protocol. So for sleep apnea, first you need to understand what is the severity of case. And also if patient is responder, it is not a right thing to experiment on patient without knowing the severity of a sleep apnea. And if patient is a responder, first do the expansion and then pray to God that is going to address the problem. So we need to give the appliance, this apno uh, TX is wearing it. We do the you know, four to six weeks of the, based on the guidelines of American Academy of Dental Sleep Medicine and a sleep medicine and dental sleep medicine. He, when he used to the appliance, he wears it at night time for his TNJ problem and for the uh, management of the sleep apnea. And then we do the efficacy test. Efficacy test shows that, you know, the patient is responsive. How much we need to increase the volume of the mouth in order to get the tongue out of the airway and he's responsive to that. So then we get the kind of calculation that now if we expand the nasal cavity, we expand the mouth, then you are going to be successful. So his efficacy test showed that, you know, it's successful. Then we start opening the space with Invisalign. So this is going to take about three to uh, five months with Invisalign, open this space and prepare him for day. He's wearing the appliance at nighttime. So we are going to, you know, now, before we do the day, we are going to do main on upper because definitely on older patients, many patients, main, meaning that just marpy or main does not work. They need to have something like dome. But you never know. In females, the oldest patient that we tried main is 63 year old. With no surgery, we expanded the palate of 63 year old. But we still we give it a shot. The lower one is ready for dame. Then we do the main for three or four days, doesn't open up. Now patient goes to one surgery and surgeon is going to do the dome procedure on top and then dame procedure right inside the lip of the lower in the same uh, you know, uh, appointment. And then we are going to have the separation and start expanding. Now, I told you that how carefully, and he's wearing the appliance at meanwhile to support his uh, sleep apnea still and his joint because his bite is so screwed up that if we don't have the night guard effect of the apno TX, he patient get a lot of pain. So you see the degree of expansion, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, now the consolidation uh, you know, period starts. One thing that you need to pay attention with the very careful osteotomy the surgeon the still we end uh, he end up with a little bit of uh, more expansion on the left. Is it noticeable? Yes, it's noticeable. Okay, so now this is what we did. So we waited for the consolidation period, and then gradually patient come back after three or four months. We are we are ready to remove his. And, you know, lower expander, but we did something. Before we removed the lower expander, the upper one, I removed the tads on this side. You see? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the side that was overexpanded, right? Mm -hmm. But not vertically. It was just side to side in transverse direction. So the other side tads are in the bone run. So what we did, we did the reverse constriction. So it means that dentally, we brought this. Now, when we do the active expansion, we do twice a day, and it takes about like uh, two weeks or three weeks to expand rapidly. But for reverse constriction is dental. 
one turn on Wednesday, one turn on uh, Sunday, and gradually we bring the upper teeth back and make it symmetric with lower. That's fascinating. Wow. That's brilliant. That's yes. that's brilliant. It is all that. You know, after doing 20 years of this, you get some ideas. Around. That's my favorite <laughs> so far, by the way. Sure. So he's still wearing the appliance. And then now we decide that he's coming off the cement. You can see that how symmetric is his maxilla. Now he's going to, you know, move to retainers. But still, we are not going to discontinue Apno TX. Why? Because right immediately after removal of this, we cannot do the sleep test. Why? Because these tads are into the nose of the patient. Some of them are sitting in the turbinate of the patient. And when you remove it, actually it creates some inflammation and the nasal cavity is inflamed and they don't show any response on reduction of the HI. So we need to wait about two or three months till that inflammation is gone, two months, and then later we are going to do another efficacy test. When efficacy test shows that it's fine, then we discontinue apno TX because now patient is safe. You know, it doesn't have a sleep apnea, hopefully. And now you are going to start correcting his mouth that I'll show you in another case. Uh, can I make a comment, doctor? It looks like sure. the apno TX has a jack screw in it so that it can expand with the jaws. That's how it that's, right. that's how it's dynamic. Exactly. You got it. Wow. You notice it. Yeah, the the Apno TX is a fascinating appliance that is going to expand front to back for bringing the mandible forward for opening the airway, but it has a very isolated upper part. So you see that the upper part of it here, but there is a lower screw that also they're going to be independently can expand on top and bottom mm -hmm. and follow the expansion of the palate. Mm -hmm. It's a nice color too. <laughs> yeah, it is it's a, actually, it is a blue and doing a glow in the dark. Um, I have a patient, older patient, 95 years old, and he said that once a while this comes off his, off his mouth and he had a hard time to find it. So we make it glow in the dark, so it's very easy to find, you know, find it. And kids, they have fun with it because it's a, this appliance is type 2 medical device, meaning that is a medical device for as uh, uh, MAD, mandibular advancement device, but also is a type one medical device because it's going to help to grow of the jaw of the uh, you know growing population, like ch uh, children, teenagers. They wear this appliance within Mesoline. When you are correcting the class two skeletal, it does not have headgear effect, does not bring the maxilla back, but it encourages the mandible to grow if they have a good potential to do that. Brilliant.